As you know, usually I choose the longer version of a gospel, but today I went with the shorter version. The reason why is because I think in my older age, it's a joke, of course, once again, but I think I'm finally getting a little more humble, and I can admit that, you know, there's better preachers than me. And one of the persons I know is a better preacher than me is Jesus. I admit it. He's better than me, all right? I can finally admit Jesus knows better than me, and he's a much better preacher as well. And because of this, I said, you know what? Why don't we just take the end of the gospel today and make that the beginning of my homily? So at least you have one good part of your homily today. And of course, it's because of Jesus' words. And so we know the end of the parable. What does Jesus do in this one? This is the one that he truly explains what this parable means. So let's take a look, and not a look, but let's listen to what it would have said and what it does say. Hear then the parable of the sword. The seed sown on the path is the one who hears the word of the kingdom without understanding it. And the evil one comes and steals away what was sown in his heart. The seed sown on rocky ground is the one who hears the word and receives it at once with joy. But he has no root and lasts only for a time. When some tribulation or persecution comes because of the word, he immediately falls away. The seed sown among thorns is the one who hears the word But then worldly anxiety and the lure of riches choke the word, and it bears no fruit. But the seed sown on rich soil is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields a hundred, or sixty, or thirtyfold. Of course, what part of the seed do we want to be? We want to be the one that bears fruit. We want to be that last one, right? But so often we probably come and hear this gospel, and every year it's probably a little different. What are we doing? What part are we? What part of the seed are we today? What part of the story, part of the parable, which one do I fall into? And chances are I may even change year by year, week by week, day by day, even minute by minute. Of course, once again, our desire is that we bear much fruit. But how do we get to that point? Well, it's a gradual step. Of course, you're here today. And because of this, it means that you are open. We are open at least to say, God, do with me as you will. So we're saying we want to be cultivated. We want truly God's word to take fruit in us, to take root in us. So we are saying, we are here, we're opening ourselves up to you. And that's the first step, as we hear about today. We're saying, even this, we want to receive your word and understand it. Beautiful. Okay, but as we go along with this parable as well, we hear what? The next one says, if a seed falls on rocky ground, it will spring up quickly, but it truly will bear no fruit. It will wither in the sun. You know, my mother was, was, grew up on a farm in Newmarket, Minnesota, and she tells stories sometimes, her and all of her uncle, my uncles and aunts, saying their least favorite job they had was to go out in the field in the spring and pick rocks. They have to go out there bucket after bucket after bucket. And the reason they went out to pick rocks was twofold. Number one was to make sure that when, when Grandpa Deutscher, Clarence, they called him, I probably called him Dad, when he went out there and plowed, they didn't want the plow to get messed up, but also... They knew if they were to put seed on top of a rock, it wouldn't bear any fruit. And year after year after year, they'd have to go out there and pick these rocks. They still do it today. Now, I guess there's machines out there to help out with that now. But even then, I'm sure you still have to go out there by hand a little bit. You know, in our souls, sometimes we too can be filled with rocks. We can say to God, hey, I'm open. But you see this part of my life right here? Big rock. I'm going to block it from you because I don't want any seed to go there. What do I mean by this? Maybe this is something we're holding on to. Maybe it's a past hurt from someone. Maybe it's a relationship that's went terribly wrong and there's a rift between you and a sister or a brother or, God forbid, a spouse. You're saying, God, I'm not going to give that over to you. I just don't want to touch it. Maybe it's a sin we continue to do over and over and over again. If this is the case, then what do we have to do? Just like the farm that goes out into the field and picks rocks, we need to pick that out. We need to say, I'm taking away so the fruit may truly be born. I'm not going to hide anything from you. And then, of course, the seed will be able to sprout. Now, of course, we also know, Jesus says, that some seed goes amongst weeds. And in this, what happens, the weed chokes them out. They're not able to come to fruition because they're so caught up in worldly allures. You know, a couple weeks ago, I was driving by the church, and I saw a couple parishioners. Praise God, they were out there. They're outside of our church right here. A couple times I've seen them, and they're weeding our garden. And driving by afterwards, I said, oh, what a beautiful garden. But before that, the only thing I could see was weeds. But they were able to pick through this. And they picked through all these weeds so that the flowers that are out there truly can be seen. So praise God for those volunteers to do it. Right? Now we have a beautiful garden. In our life as well, so often we get caught up in worldly allurements. Just this past week, 
I gave in. It was Friday. It was a good Friday morning. I started really well at Mass here. Then I went and did Mass at a nursing home. Went and visited some homebound parishioners. Then on the way back from there, I decided, hey, I'm going to turn the radio on to KFAN. Why not? Let's listen to little Paul Allen in the morning, right? And sure enough, I hear breaking news. LeBron James is coming home. He's going back to Cleveland. Great, awesome, right? That's all I should have known. But no, I got back to the office, and I said hello to everyone. And I went and clicked on ESPN, and an hour later, I was still looking at stories about LeBron James going back to Cleveland. Who cares, right? But there I was, allured in this worldly thing, so caught up that a basketball player is going back to a city I don't even cheer for. Why did I get so caught up? Because it was an easy distraction. So I'm attached to the world sometimes. And this weed, what did it prohibit me from doing? I don't know. But probably something God had planned for me, I decided not to do. Now, I know this is a silly example. But so often in our life, we get attracted so easily to this world and we get caught up in it. And we say to God, yes, God, I want to bear fruit for you. But also, I want to make sure I have these worldly pleasures and I get caught up in this as well. And what happens? The fruit that we want to bear starts to get drowned out by these weeds. And once again, just like that rock, what we have to do is go through and pick away at it to spend time. Have you ever seen someone who has a garden Every single day, for the most part, they're out there working, 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 working. This has to be in our faith life as well. Working, working, working. Not giving up. Not just saying, you know what, I'm good for now. I'll check back in a couple months. Try that in a garden. It'll look like it happened out here. Not too good. But every single day, we should go there and pick away and say, God, what do you desire of me? And just like a farmer as well, we know we have to be patient. It's not like a chachua pet or whatever it was called, right? Chachia pet. Doesn't this spring up overnight? Our faith this doesn't spring up overnight. We have to have endurance. We talked about this a couple weeks ago. Our faith is a marathon, not a sprint. So we be patient. And sometimes it will take years for our faith truly to come to fruition. Just like those who plant a vineyard. The first three years, nothing. Nothing to show for it. But eventually it starts to bear fruit over and over and over again. So we too are patient in our faith life. When we do all these things, when we go to God and say, I'm open, when we pick away those rocks, when we weed away those things that are distracting us from God, and when we are patient, what's going to happen? Well, then we're going to bear fruit, 100-fold, 60-fold, 30-fold. Isn't that what you want to do? Isn't that what you desire? So often, I'll talk to some people that are, are close to death, and it's a beautiful time to talk to them, but one of the questions that often comes up to me when they're asking, they say, Father Carlson, will I be known for anything? What did I leave behind? And I'll try to talk to them about their faith. And I'll let them know, you know, you're inspiring people. You inspire people throughout your life. Because at the end of the day, isn't that what we want to do? Don't we want to bear fruit in this world? Don't we want to leave a legacy? And not so people can look at us like LeBron James and say he was the best basketball player in the world. But rather we can be like the saints. Who for years upon years upon years, we are still celebrating. 100, 200, 2,000 years later. This is what we should desire to do. And this will happen when we truly go to God and tell him, I'm here for you, and I want to bear fruit, and I will work at it. Here I am, God. Do with me as you will. And then fruit will be born, 160 and 30-fold.